What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Tonight we are back in the shop and we're going to be continuing working on this 14 bolt. So as you can see behind me, I already have the calipers and the caliper brackets just mocked on and I'll show you how to get those on right now. The first thing that I'm going to show you is how I get this disc brake conversion system set up. So I do have the Barnes four wheel drive disc brake conversion bracket for the 14 bolt. And then I have some, the brake pads and I'll show you the, um, the part number to the, let's see if it'll focus. This is the part number for this caliper that I'm using just in case you're doing this at home. I'll put the parts number to the caliper in there. I don't have the box. I spray painted it. Sorry about that. But so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this set up and get it ready to mock up on the axle. The first thing I'm going to do is get my caliper on the table and then I'm going to line this up, get it down to where the bolt holes line up. go. Now I'm going to take my brake shoes, my brake pads and get those on. Just like that. Now I'm going to take the bolt, run it all the way through. Get that one started. All right. So this is it all together. Now I'm going to take the setup and place it on the axle. I'm going to take a rubber mallet. So I've got everything pretty much sort of where I want it. Uh, I don't know exactly where these are going to line up just yet. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm going and I'm just cleaning up where I'll be welding those caliper brackets on. So you can see I have the axle tilted back just a little bit. So whenever you are putting the axle in the vehicle, it's not going to be, you know, zero degrees. It's actually going to be uh, pointed up towards the transfer case. And I don't know exactly where that's going to fall until it's actually in the Jeep. So you can get a pretty good idea with the degrees. I, I can't remember exactly what degree it is right now. But I'm just trying to make sure that before I put this underneath the Jeep that everything's going to line up. The biggest issue that I've had so far is that my breather tube comes right through here on the truss. So I did have to clearance this. I will be fixing it once I get, you know, for sure everything welded in. And then another thing is that my ARB line uh, comes up right underneath the truss. So definitely going to have to be cautious when I'm filling this in. So, you know, I could just go ahead and fill this in right here, but then I won't be able to get the line in. So I don't know. So I'm going to come back to that. But what I have done so far is I, before I weld this on, you want to make sure that you paint the bottom side of this just because if not, it's just going to rust and cause problems years and years down the road that you could avoid spending 10 seconds in spray painting. So I went ahead and did that. 
And then I did order new um, bolts for the cover. I lost them, to be honest with you. Uh, very surprising in this shop. I'm just kidding. So whenever you're setting up these brake calipers and you're, you know, you're welding them on, you want to make sure, no matter what, that this is the highest point. That way when you're bleeding it, you know, obviously all the air will go up and out and it'll be a lot easier. I've got everything pretty much where I want it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start doing some tack welds on the brake, the disc brake conversion and the truss. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some, just some good tacks on this. And then I'll probably go ahead and weld these all up. And then I'll start on the brakes, getting those tacked in. But anyway, let's get to it. So I have the axle all tacked up. I've got the truss tacked up. And then I've got the disc brake conversion kit all tacked up. I was having some issues with my welder. I was having a gas leak where, it, where the hose meets the actual welder. So when I first started tacking, it was all porous and everything. So I couldn't figure out what was going on, but once I figured that out, I shot right through it. It's not the prettiest welds, but it'll work. So what I'm gonna do now is, I'm actually gonna let this cool down, and, cause you don't wanna get this too hot. So if you, you know, start, if you like weld this, and then weld that, weld this, there's a chance that this axle will warp. So you definitely don't want that. So what I'm doing is I'm just doing a little bit at a time but I think it's gonna be all right. So what I'm gonna do now, since I already have these tacked up, I am going to take all this apart and make sure I get good welds and everything and we'll be good to go. So while I'm letting these tack welds cool, they're cool to touch now, but while I'm just kind of letting them get room temperature what I'm going to do is I'm going to be replacing these old crusty bolts with some brand new ones. And I'm going to be putting some RVT all over. I'm going to clean this up and put some RVT on. So here is the finished product. Got the truss all welded up, got the disc brake conversion all painted. Everything's looking good. And you can see I have the Cherokee on the lift. So it's kind of nice to kind of have an open bay in here again. So now what I'm going to do is before I weld these leaf spring perches on, is you want to make sure that you get your pinion angle exactly where you want it. And you can't do that unless it's underneath the vehicle. So this axle's got to come out, so that's what we're about to do right now. So a major reason why I'm not using this Dana 44 is it's off-centered. I don't know if you can see with the light, but yeah. So you can see my transfer case right there and my axle differential is over here. So from the factory, these Cherokees, they had a gas tank underneath the driver's side floor. So everything was pushed to the passenger side. Well, like I said in a video before, I have a 
I believe it's a 1998 uh, GMC uh, Blazer two-door gas tank installed in here. So that way I can center up my axle and put it where it should be. So I got to get rid of all those old wires and all that mess. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get this rear axle out and get the 14 bolt underneath here. And to answer another question, why don't I just put another Dana 44 out of a Wagoneer underneath? Well, I looked it up and it is just as expensive to build a 14 bolt as it is a Dana 44. And I actually got this axle in trade for a small dirt bike. So uh, I already had the 14 bolt at the house or in my sh or around my shop so I just went ahead and was like well why would I buy another Dana 44 when I have a 14 bolt sitting in my shop it was actually outside but so I don't know it's one of those things it's a compromise after compromise but I'll go ahead and build it the way I want to the first time so since I already have the drive shaft disconnected, I already have the brakes disconnected, all I have to do is just take the U-bolts off of the leaf spring and the axle will drop right out. So what I plan on doing just to make it simpler on myself is I'm actually gonna leave the tires on and just undo the U-bolts and roll the axle right out of my shop and then take this cart and roll it right up underneath it. So hopefully it'll go just that easy. Alright, so I have the 14 bolt uh, just poorly mocked up underneath the Cherokee and how I got to this point was I did some measurements on the Jeep and what I did was I just divided that measurement in half and got my center line of the vehicle and then I measured the axle wheel mounting surface to wheel mounting surface and then got my center point on the axle and then I lined it up and then I just kind of mocked it up up underneath the leaf springs where it's pretty even and so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take the leaf spring purchase and just set on the axle and then bring the jeep to the bring the jeep to the axle and get my u-bolts in that way the Jeep, the U-bolts will actually be holding the axle, so then I'll get the tires on and I'll bring it all back down. And then I can, once the weight is on the axle, I can determine my pinion angle. All right, so now that I've got the axle centered exactly where I want it, I do have the leaf spring purchase up under here. And I'll be taking some brand new U-bolts from Barnes four-wheel drive. Always make sure you use brand new U-bolts. But start sending these bad boys up. Just like that. I'm gonna get a nut on it. That way they don't fall. like that and send the next one up I always forget how simple leaf springs are that one make sure you put the washers on these so the axle is suspended in the air right now you can see I've kind of got just a 
ratchet strap in there just making sure that whenever I picked up the axle it just didn't immediately just turn down forward and there's not that much pressure on it either way but so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lower it down and get the tires and wheels on and then I'm going to adjust my pinion angle with this uh, jack. So the tires and wheels that I will be running on this for right now are just some Toyo Open Country MTs and some Hummer H1 takeoffs. And I, I think the wheels look really good, but the only thing is the backspacing on these. I'll show you on this wheel right here. They're pretty, uh, they're pretty in there. So I am going to have to unfortunately be running a wheel spacer for right now. I knew I was going to have to. I uh, looked it up online. But these will be fine until I can get some bead locks for this. But for right now, I'm just going to be mocking this up. I'm not going to be driving with it right now. So I'm not going to be doing the lock tighten and the torquing and all that stuff right now. But We'll go ahead and get these tires on and get it sitting on its own weight. With the Jeep sitting on its own weight, we can jack up on this jack and get the pinion angle exactly where we want it. All right, maybe y'all can see a little better. The rule of thumb here with the pinion angle is that you want it pretty much pointing at the transfer case. It's probably too dark to see, but you want it pretty much pointing at the transfer case. You don't want it pointing directly at it. You want it one, maybe one degree off of being perfectly in line or pointing at it. So this is pretty much where I want it. I'm going to do some measurements again. I've probably pulled the tape measure a million times tonight, but I'm going to do a million more measurements and then I will tack this in and then we'll get this axle out and we will fully weld the perches on the 14 bolt but I really really like the way it's turning out it did pick it up just a little bit in the rear probably from the axle tube being a little bit bigger but hopefully it won't be too terribly tall. I don't want to have to cut these fenders out anymore. But you can see how much further it sticks out. Not too terribly much. That front axle is a little wider than this axle. So I got some good meaty tacks on these perches up under here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lift the Jeep up just a little bit and get these u-bolts out and get the axle out and finish welding these leaf spring perches so now that i've got the jeep off of the axle i'm going to go ahead and weld these perches in fully and i'm going to do just like i did the truss i'm just going to do maybe stitch weld stitch weld jump around back and forth let it cool just because I don't want to heat up that axle tube too terribly much. And one welding tip, I'm by no means a professional welder, but what really helps me out is lighting. So go ahead and get some good lighting if you're going to be doing this. Because it will definitely go a long way. All right, I got all my welding done. I do have everything painted with steel it. So what I'm gonna do now is put the U-bolts back in. I'm not gonna torque them down just yet cause I'm probably gonna have to take this axle out one more time. Maybe not, but I'm just not gonna torque them down just yet and go ahead and stretch the U-bolts just in case. So here is the final product or final-ish product. Got everything buttoned up. 
I did go ahead and cut off the U-bolts. That way I could get my socket on them. And I'm very pleased. I think it looks awesome. I think the wheels look awesome. Bead locks would be a lot cooler, but I can't decide which ones that would look best on this. So definitely leave in the comments what bead locks you think would look awesome on this rig. But for now, these will do. That's gonna wrap up this video. I really appreciate y'all watching me put the 14 bolt in the Cherokee Chief. It's definitely gonna be a cool rig once it's done. And I'm super excited about it. The next video that y'all will probably see on this, I'll be getting the Dana 60 in the front. So that's definitely gonna motivate me to finish it because I am so ready to drive this thing and take it on adventures and just take the kids to Sonic and stuff like that. But anyway, I really appreciate y'all watching. Make sure that you hit that like button and make sure that you are subscribed so that you don't miss out on the next video on this build. But like I said, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.